What's up guys, this is Fiasco. We are playing Ultimate General Civil War, continuing our Confederate Let's Play. We're taking a look at uh, some of the officers that are going to go in some of the units here uh, before uh, the Battle of Port Republic. And I know in the last video I would mistakenly called it First Springfield. It's because I wasn't really sure what it was called. I'm trying to get away with getting a lower ranked officer in 9th Infantry and it's just not, not possible. So what I've done here is I've saved... Uh, I have a generic kind of camp save screen, or camp save, uh, and then I have the the broader uh, save for the, the stream. So we have nine units possible, we're bringing nine units. Notice that in the last video the Union had 11,000 soldiers, and now they've got 13 and change. This is the game's scaling coming into play. So the Yankees are, are taking a position here, and we need to go ahead and push them out of those woods, uh, and we're going to have a limited portion of our nine units available initially with the remainders coming from uh, the Battle of Cross Keys. Scouts report that the strung, their force is strung out here along that road uh, with reinforcements to arrive uh, soon. And they will. They'll arrive from the top. So the game initially tries to give me two of my better units, and uh, I don't want my vanguard to be composed uh, of them. Um, instead, I'll be using sort of the, uh, uh, the, the meat unit, <laughs> the the you know, rather unceremonious kind of ram them through the front line units. So 11th and 9th Infantry have been pulled up. Uh, these are my largest units at both 2,500 men apiece. This gives me the best possible start I can going into this battle with 5,000 men. Now, ultimately, uh, the Union will be down in those cops of trees, and there's going to be some reinforcements coming from up there, uh, and my reinforcements will come from the top left of the map. Uh, so the first thing we do, what's the rule? Uh, infantry advancing without recon is infantry advancing into an ambush. So I'm going to go ahead and detach skirmishers and uh, advance to the river. Uh, if I am if I remember from a couple of times I've played this battle before, uh, there won't be anything until I get to the main block of trees down at the... Um, where the where the flag is. But this is still a good policy to um, basically kind of know what you're doing before you cross a river. So rivers are dangerous because uh, in the game, um, watch watch the cover of the units as they go through the river, I, gu I guess. Yeah, so it drops. It's not as bad as crossing different other rivers, like a, a full river that I guess this, this treats it like as a creek. But um, generally speaking, every unit will have around 25% cover, just out in the open, in the grass, you know, whatever. This represents the unit being spread out. And rivers are what makes them so great for the player and also dangerous to cross is that they lower your cover down to zero. And cover, I don't know the math behind the game in terms of the engine or how it all works, but I'm assuming cover is sort of a negative, uh, negative penalty on incoming fire. So 25% of incoming fire is reduced if you're in the grant in the open. And, <clears throat> um, you know, if you're in the woods here, you get a 90% debuff on incoming fire. You'll still take damage, but you won't take as much as maybe you would. Well, in the river, with a 0% cover, as you can imagine, incoming fire becomes just devastating, essentially. So uh, we have the skirmishers here in this, this these woods, and they're they're fixed Carroll's brigade, twenty nine hundred men, uh, occupying the woods near the flag, and they've identified a battery of artillery off to the far, uh, well, I guess my right, the Union left. So what I'm doing now is I'm pushing forward with the skirmishers from the eleventh infantry, with um, basically just seeing what else is in those woods, uh, and. Carol, for whatever reason, takes the bait and decides to turn and follow uh, 11th Infantry, which is great because skirmishers and woods have all kinds of debuffs to the incoming fire just because they're spread out and they can utilize the cover of those trees very effectively. So uh, this is not my original plan, but I aggressively push up 11th um, to occupy these these woods to uh, Carol's is left, and essentially I'm turning his flank. So 9th is out. Uh, in front, intending to try and pour fire into Carol's front, which is a rough place to be for the ninth. Uh, the ninth is going to be kind of in the open, taking fire, and I, I generally want to avoid that wherever I can. Um, and so what I did there is I had the skirmishers from the eleventh remerge back into the brigade, and then and then pop them right back out. And what that does is it refills your skirmisher unit with. Uh, <clears throat> fresh troops and fresh morale and new bullets and 
you know, all that stuff. And, and the intention here is essentially just to throw something uh, to my rear because they're sending some 500 skirmishers towards the 11th Infantry, which is not likely to cause them some serious problems, but could divert the attention of the unit away from where it needs to be. So now my skirmishers and their skirmishers are meleeing, which is really not good for anybody. And fortunately, we get our reinforcements. So um, the mounted infantry unit is going to act as sort of a fire brigade to sort of uh, jump as emergency support to uh, that tree line position. And then uh, you see my medium elite units coming on the board. They're not really elite, but they're they're rifle arm units. They're all around 1,700 versus the smoothbore units at 2,500. And we're going to figure out the best way to try and utilize them. So I want some of them in the trees keeping the Union to the south occupied, but I also know that there's going to be reinforcements coming from the north. And so i got to try and figure out how best to allocate them in a way uh, that they can uh, prevent the Union from crossing this river, which is a great anchor for my my left flank. So now we have the skirmishers and the dismounted cavalry all kind of occupying my um, really, I would not call it a secure right flank yet. It's, it's on the way towards being secured, but it's not secured yet. And then 9th and Carol are going to be kind of trading blows across the woods there. So it's two units both in woods, trading fire. It's not a great place to be. I don't want to waste a lot of ammunition or time that way. However, my guys are firing downhill. So <clears throat> also Carol's not very well formed yet. You notice that his fire is um, not organized or not volley based. So the units hovering around the, probably the 40% morale mark. Uh, and the union is aggressively pushing my block of trees up here because if if they let me get situated it's basically over uh, but with the artillery now in position and third infantry moving up to support the cavalry um, it's I would think their window to try and take that block of woods is more or less passed And um, now I'm moving 11 infantry to the south. Uh, no, don't be afraid to pause. We need to figure out what our plan is. Uh, is the infantry, the Union will be coming from my right, and they are going to try and cross this river. And right now I'm so occupied with the skirmish that's happening uh, to my south and west that I'm... Oh, jeez. Those howitzers are brutal. My goodness. So for whatever reason, Carroll's broken cover. Notice on the right here, uh, by 9th Infantry, Carroll's broken cover to try and assault uh, that position, which just seems silly. You know, uphill, over open terrain, into, into stationary troops in woods. I can't think of a, a situation I would less like to be ordered to attack in. All right, so the 11th Infantry has engaged one of those skirmishers in melee and... and Line infantry actually has decent melee stats. Uh, and yeah, they, they break, as you may imagine. So now we've got the skirmisher cav kind of moving in on Carol's rear, well, 5th infantry with rifled muskets moves to replace 9th. And they're relieving them um, for two reasons. One, 9th uh, infantry has smoothbore muskets, which are not super duper accurate. And the 5th does have muskets. Uh, additionally, I need... My intention is to treat the smoothbore units as kind of, I don't want to say battering ram, but they're, like, they're the, I would look at them in a Napoleonic definition as grenadiers. They're not meant to be trading significant amounts of fire uh, over long range with enemy units. They're supposed to be maneuvering and bashing in the front door. Um, and it's cool in this game that a simple thing like giving them, you know, different weapons and whatnot can really change the way you use a unit. So this uh, artillery was actually a little not ideal. Um, my dream would have been to get 6th Infantry on Tyler's flank and deliver a volley into uh, them out in the open, and it doesn't work out um, <laughs> because the howitzers are actually too successful. So... Um, 
my initial plan of, of kind of occupying that copse of trees up by 9th Infantry is um, thwarted with the arrival of the reinforcements. He'd be overextended, and uh, I don't want to do that. I want I want to, you know, the, the second maxim is essentially treat the woods as your fortresses and only attack if you can, you know, if you have to. So um, I push 11th Infantry to support 6th Infantry here in the south by Tyler. Uh, because it's one brigade of infantry and a battery of artillery, and I'd like to remove both from the game. I don't, looking back, I don't think I actually do, but um, I definitely, definitely, yeah, see, 6th Infantry is right there by himself. That's a really good way to lose a lot of good troops. They're two stars. They've got good weapons. I don't want to do that. So we send 11th in to kind of occupy them from the rear, and then hopefully... Uh, kick them out of those woods there. And that was absolutely me overextending uh, or getting too aggressive with 6th Infantry without them kind of having the support they needed. Uh, fortunately, they are two-star units with good, good great stats, um, well-led. So Tyler, who was on the edge of breaking anyway, wasn't really in a place to be launching a fight like that. And... You know, goodness, just their experience kind of wears out, or pair, uh, bears out. 11th is in a great position to take out this artillery. And I break off uh, skirmishers from 6th to support that mission. Let's get rid of that artillery, uh, especially if we can capture them, especially whatever. But regardless, killing whole units is what I can do. That's the best trick I've got to manage uh, the Union's total manpower, which is the ultimate objective of this particular campaign, is to really keep that number as low as possible. And Carol has broken woods. He's lost all kind of unit coherency or whatnot. And they're trying to cross the river, uh, which is fine. So the artillery is broken in the south. I'm hyper-focused on this engagement with Tyler uh, because even right now where he's sort of on the edge of breaking... Oh, man, Carol's having a bad day. Uh, so let's read. Yeah, we we uh, redeploy the artillery now that the more extant threat is trying to cross that river. Now, from the Union perspective, this is a bad place to be. Uh, they've got, if they're going to try and cross the river, they've got to do so against emplaced troops who are well-formed, have rifled weapons, and are crossing a river into open terrain against troops who are in a covered position. Like this is a dream, a dream defensive position. And now I've got artillery support. Now they're going to have to get loaded and they're not going to be ready to fire right away. But when first howitzer comes online, it, I mean, I just don't see And it, it. This particular battle does not go well, but I don't see how any grouping of units could, could take this particular blah, defensive position without just horrendous casualties. I'm seeing if I can't get rid of General Tyler. Uh, killing their generals, the AI does lose generals too. Now, I, I don't know if the AI has to manage. Um, I'm sure it does. And, you know, uh, a pool of officers or whatever, but, you know, um, that's that's part of it too. I don't know kind of how a lot of that works in terms of do they have to manage, you know, uh, efficiency and stats like that or whatever, if they just kind of get whatever the AI thinks is a good, good number. And I'd love to get... Um, canister, I think maybe might be a little over aggressive, but K shot on that river crossing where they're just tightly clumped like that um, would be, you know, dream. So I've got my guys uh, 6 and 11th and the skirmishers there. I'm trying to rest them up uh, before we push into that copse of woods where uh, Tyler's brigade was. And poor Carol here is trying to come up. Like, poor Carol. I think his unit started at 2,900, so they've lost over 1,000 guys. Uh, it's just a rough place to be for that that brigade. And yeah, normally I'm all about moving moving the supply wagons around, but I don't know if I need to here. This this defensive position is so central, and I can kind of use these trees to treat it kind of like interior lines and just bounce around as whatever I need to if I get attacked from different directions. Now, I, I won't. I'm pretty sure the attack only comes from this direction in the course of the battle, but, you know, here's, what, 5,000 infantry more or less just marching to... 
uh, their slaughter. I don't even want to get, like, I don't want to sound cocky about it, but there's just no way. And they're trying, they're doing the right thing. Like, they're trying to fly and call on this thing, just kind of ram, ram as many numbers up the center as they can. Um, in their shoes, I would try and cross near 9th Infantry, but even then I would take losses. I don't know if they know 9th is there. Um, regardless, I would have a screen of skirmishers. I would see what I'm faced with, and I would not, would not, would not, would not <laughs> cross, cross the way they're crossing, because there's just no way. Uh, so 2nd, 8th, and 5th, along with 1st Howitzer, are going to just pour fire uh, on this open field, and I don't see any way. It's just farming experience at this point. All right, so it looks like General Tyler has been removed from the fight. Uh, however, there's Tyler's brigade still on my um, my far right, which is the screen's left. It's a bit disorienting because it's a it's a north north oriented camera, but I'm coming from the south. Or I'm sorry, I'm coming from the north, moving south. So my right is the screen's left. So the Union push is completely shattered at this point, and um, I know I do cross the river, but I'm trying to determine if I do it now or if I wait for them to try and push again. So my 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 goal is to uh, get those batteries of artillery. Um, you talk about managing Union numbers. Union access to heavy cannon is increasingly a problem. So over the course of this Let's Play so far, I've mostly managed to kind of get a lot of mileage out of this one this one division um, of artillery. 12 batteries, or 12 guns is what? Probably two batteries? So it's, yeah, this this battalion uh, of of artillery has been what I've gotten the most mileage out of. We're rapidly getting to the point where the player needs to scale up to the point where they can run these battles with 20 units or these battles with, you know, well, the next fight is going to have a cap of up to 55. Now, I don't think we're going to be able to field a full 55 core uh, going into Gaines Mill, but you need to be able to fight at that kind of scale because the Union is going to... Uh, be able to fight at that scale so we need to we need to flex with that and that's part of this is part of the big army strategy and, and i'm making some modifications here so so there's i think a discussion to be had on a, on a strategic level over the course of your playthrough of a, a quantity versus quality uh kind of you know where do you where do you want to sit and um you've seen in in the composition of this nine uh nine brigade army that I've, I've kind of split that difference. So I've got, um, a solid core of, I would say medium, medium units, a rifle arm. They're about 1700 guys, you know, uh, one and two stars, whatever. And then I've got these just huge battering ram grenadier units. And I've got two of them right now, but I'm going to, I mean, obviously as we flex up for Gaines mill, I'm going to have a whole bunch of them and, uh, they're going to be green and they're going to be an experience. And that's going to be, uh, a challenge that I have to manage. Um, as the army kind of grows and the scale of the war um, grows up. Now, historically, th this game kind of does a good job of kind of capturing how big the war was relatively to each era. Um, I mean, first bull run is a huge battle, right? Like relative to the, the, the player only brings three or four units, but um, bull run is a huge battle. And uh, the Seven Days campaign was, uh, you know, the equal of, of any other campaign in that era. So you saw 11th there. I don't usually advocate running, um, but I wanted to sprint across that open terrain. Oh, goodness. So Tyler's coming at me. Fortunately, um, 6th Infantry is, is well supported from a number of different directions. So poor Tyler's going to eat it from a bunch of, you know, 11th and the skirmishers and the dismounted cav. Uh, and I'm, I'm moving third to support. So I kind of want to box him in um, from every possible angle and, and, excuse me, prevent Tyler from um, maneuvering effectively. So I think the Union has decided they're not going to try and push. And 
Um, my focus is kind of split right now. Oh gosh. Some skirmishers and melee with that kind of force. Even even routing troops. It's not great. So my grenadiers, 11th infantry, getting in their melee again. Those guys are going to level up their melee stat like crazy. And uh, yeah, I mount up the cav and charge them in there. At this point in time, I'm worried about losing the skirmishers from 6th infantry. That's 180 some odd guys that you've got a good experience, they've got good weapons. I, I don't want to lose them if I can avoid it. Um, and I got to get them out of that melee whenever possible. Now, frankly, we're in the good position that Tyler's more or less shattered. And yeah, okay, cool. So, so the, the skirmishers are broken from, from melee combat. And I'm going to probably fold them back in with uh, their main, their parent brigade at this point. And uh, now I'm trying, now I'm trying to get out of melee. Uh, as, as much as, you know, I, I just had this whole discussion about using grenadiers and ramming in the front door and all that kind of stuff. I generally want to avoid melee combat wherever possible. It's 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 hard to coordinate anything. It's hard to organize. Like it's it it just becomes this big, you know, scrum between, you know, the three thousand some odd people on both sides that are fighting it out. And there's a lot of chances that you'll lose your officer. And there's a lot of chances. Okay, so the game wants me to end the battle now, and I get why. Like there's the AI has decided they're going to throw in the towel. They're not going to be able to take this flag, and. Um, I'm strongly tempted to end the battle and just be like, all right, cool, you know, fun games. Um, but instead, uh, we're going to try, and this is the opportunity to try and manage those casualties. So we're going to, we're going to go hunting basically. Um, and I decide this because the AI, I guess, becomes aware of, uh, ninth infantry. So we're, we're milking Tyler for casualties. We're milking Tyler for stats. Um, I'm moving units to start moving north. Um, yep. And, uh, you know, I decide to have them run um, because it's a, it's a blitzkrieg maneuver. Um, I need to quickly occupy that copse of trees. And I need to support 9th Infantry because they're going to get charged. Uh, by what appears to be a fresh Union uh, brigade. I debate, I debate, like, is it worth the casualties? I debate ending the battle. You can see my mouse hovering over the button. Um, you know, spoiler alert, I do decide to fight it all out. Mostly, honestly, mostly because 2nd Infantry gets there in time to support. And that's the... It's what they need to shut down the Union counteroffensive there so now 9th and 8th are in position um, and they're firing up uphill which is not great I don't you know I wouldn't I wouldn't prefer that uh, but we're willing to accept in this playthrough more casualties than normally I would um, in order to generate heavier casualties on the Union Uh, because that that numbers manpower advantage will pretty quickly get um, I wouldn't say insurmountable, but very hard for me to counter. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, trying to say like oh with good play or something like it's just not it's it's hard to do it. Um, so I'm maneuvering in this section of the battlefield blind, and I want to start dispatching some skirmishers to try and give me an idea of, you know, what I'm dealing with and where I'm fighting and whatnot. Um, as well, they can start, yeah. So 8th Infantry skirmishers here provide flanking fire, and they've got rifles, and they're two stars, so they're pretty accurate guys. Um, and this is the kind of thing that I need to shock the morale of, you know, Bolin's unit or Milroy. Um which will hopefully allow me to kind of maneuver. The dream for me is to get these units to hover, you know, around 45% morale, where they're standing so I can shoot them, um, but they're not uh, firing back in any kind of organized manner. Yep, so speaking of, Milroy decides, like, oh, 
I was very nervous because the uh, the skirmish calf was kind of out in the open, and Milroy could probably decimate them. Um, so, frankly, some supporting fire from fifth keeps them from getting off an, an effective volley. And, um, you know, now at this point in time, I've got the Union kind of boxed into this corner. Um, I'm going to go ahead and probably fast forward the battle. Uh, the video play through at, you know, one and a half times speed because really at this point it's just um, watching them grind the Union down. Uh, for the purposes of commentary, however, um, in this phase, whenever you're in this part of the battle, really prioritize targeting artillery over just about anything else. Uh, the infantry will die kind of as a side effect of being shot at by the art um you shooting at the artillery because usually at this point they're they're pretty intertwined um but you're in the range now where canister can cause some serious problems you don't need to route them to the point of them shattering although i mean that that'd be great you just need to get them to the point where they can't fire effectively um and I, i'm pretty sure i do eat one or two rounds of canister in the course of of uh this part of the engagement um because I'm either not aggressive enough against targeting artillery explicitly or uh, they have the opportunity to... Yeah, there it is. There's one of them. Um, now, fortunately, I kind of got lucky uh, that somebody was shooting Schumer at the same time as they were shooting me, uh, and that didn't get as bad as it, it definitely could have been. Um, anyway, I will uh, come back at the end of the battle and talk to you soon. All right, hey, I'm back, and uh, this is the closing closing moments of the Port Public battle. Uh, I've decided that um, we're going to charge, and the ideal situation here is that we capture Carol uh, with roughly a thousand guys, and that's because the most 
uh, prisoners you can turn in, so to speak, for uh, fresh recruits is a roughly a thousand. So anything over a thousand prisoners is basically useless or pointless. Uh, so having accomplished my goal and cleared the map, uh, we're going to unclick finish. And so we see, yeah, oh, fantastic. So uh, 1,600 casualties to just just over 9,000 for the, with, with, with the missing, just over 9,000 for the Union, um, which is phenomenal. I don't think I could do any better. Um, units do great. Look at the kill-loss ratios in some of these units. Promotions across the board. Uh, lieutenant colonels to full colonels, colonels of generals. We did lose General Ames. He's going to be out of the fight until after um, Gaines Mill. Captured just under 1,000 uh, Harper's Ferries, which is excellent, uh, excellent weapon. I recovered a bunch of Mississippis and other weapons. And uh, that's about it. So thanks again for watching. This has been Fiasco. We're working through, we're going to prep up for Gaines Mill in the next video and then jump into Gaines Mill after that. This is Ultimate General Civil War uh, on the normal Let's Play, playing the Confederates. And once again, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. And this is Fiasco out.